Hi, I'm Caleb Ebling with Four Seasons Conservation. I'm out at Pleasant Plain Lake. Uh, we're working on a bat grant program for the city of Fairfield. We're focusing on mulching honeysuckle, autumn olive, and amer maple. Uh, there is 14.9 acres here to have mulched, and currently we have half the project done. And before, you couldn't walk in here, so hopefully here in the future, we'll start having a lot more action with the community walking around here and that should help quite a bit. We're right across from the Natty Prairie at the Pleasant Plain parking lot. I'm using a John Deere with the Fecon Mulcher. It's a 74 inch head and we have carbide teeth on that which breaks down all the honeysuckle and autumn olive to a fine mulch and as time goes on we'll start to see that just deteriorate and turn into black dirt. And hopefully here in the next four or five years, we'll get a tree planting in for the new oaks and such to come up because right now the timber quality is pretty poor as it was a pine planting and we have a lot of elm and a couple locusts here and there, but main species here is walnut, um, cherry, elm, and mulberry, which cherry's okay for the timber quality, but our walnut's the biggest importance for us. So. We're gonna to try to save all of those and get this ground understory down and continue on with the tree planting. So a question I get asked a lot is, oh, you're just going in and eating all the trees. Well, a lot of the stuff that we are mulching is honeysuckle and it's just an invasive bush. So with that, when all the mature trees die out with time or had a selective harvest, there would be no new species coming up because Honeysuckle is the first thing to leaf out and the longest to keep their leaves. So when we shade the ground floor, there is no acorns that'll be able to take off for oaks, walnuts, and if there is any hickory, then we want to get a new hardwood established. So we need the honeysuckle and autumn olive to be gone for sunlight. It helps to know your tree species. If you're driving around, I mean, anybody can buy a skid litter and start mulching, but if you don't know your tree species, you might start running over walnuts and some oaks and other things, which I have a few areas where there's little one inch walnuts where I went around and you can see them. So they're gonna start flourishing a little bit better without that competition from the maples on that particular spot. Um, another question I get asked is what happens with all the down brush? With time that'll rot out. In a couple of years, it'll just break down and turn into black dirt pretty much and it'll just feed the soil. Um, or if there is a possibility of running fire through the timber that'll help with breaking this down even quicker and it is good for killing off honeysuckle as well. So any leaf outs afterwards, fire would help, the chemical treatment will help, and selective hand cutting on the third year pr process. Prior to me starting this project, I had went and walked it to see kind of what the dense honeysuckle and what invasive species I had to remove to see how thick it was, how long it would take me to put a quote on the job. Well, on this particular project, it is next to impossible to walk through and enjoy. And now that we're getting this mulched out, you can walk anywhere and be able to use the lake a little bit more and be able to walk in the community, come out, do uh, showings with this stuff for future. When honeysuckle gets too thick, it's just a big bush and just makes it impossible to walk. So there's a few areas that Warner might show you here in a little bit on uh, what it looked like previous and what it looks like now. So on my head, it's a Fecon BH-74. Right now I'm running carbid heads. It's essentially a sledgehammer and it beats it down. And the reason I'm running carbides here, there's been a lot of fence and there's a couple of rocks here and there. And if I use knives, it'll dull my knives extremely quick. and with the price of these teeth, it, it makes it really hard to continue doing this if I'm ruining stuff all the time. And it's just a high maintenance machine. There's a lot of moving parts and that head spinning extra quickly. And as Warner noticed earlier, this can throw it about 300 feet. So it, you always gotta be cautious and make sure your operator sees where you're walking or knows that you're there before going in front of him, especially and behind. This is a, a four-year project, uh, year one, mulching, getting it broke down. Second year, we'll come back in the spring leaf out and we'll treat the honeysuckle from coming back. 
third year will be timber stand improvement. So any trees like the mulberries and stuff that aren't able to be mulched will come and kill those off. So that way the oaks and walnuts and hickory, cherry, whatever can start growing without the mulberries taking over and the maple once again. And fourth year is a final treatment of the honeysuckle and we shouldn't have to worry about the honeysuckle here anymore. And after that, I'm hoping that there is a tree planting involved and I'm pretty sure Cassie will be on board with that to get some new twigs and stuff coming in and develop a new timber, bring it back to its native self. So I'm across the lake with Warner here and this is just a quick little area I did to show an example. This is the setup I'm using. These are the hardened carbide teeth. So if I do have rocks and fence and stuff, it doesn't completely ruin them. That carbide steel is very, it takes a lot of abuse. Um, this particular spot right here was loaded with honeysuckle and there is some scattered walnuts to be mindful of anyway. So here I have mulched in this little area very briefly, but this is what this entire 14.9 acres looks like. It's not good for people to walk through. I mean, you can, it just isn't very fun. Um, this is some honeysuckle here. And as I said, they're the first to leaf out and the longest to hold their leaves. So in that, when these little walnuts come up, they're shaded out so they're not able to keep growing. And the maples here, they just grow in rows and bushes and once they get started like this, they're almost impossible to control unless you're going to either be mulching or use a cut stump method or foliar spray. Um, one benefit about mulching is you have a lot less chemical involved. So when this is mulched out, obviously when you come to use a chemical treatment, you have to apply less because you're not spraying up on top of everything to grab the foliar. So when it's that tall and you have to sit and broadcast over it, it makes it, you have to use a lot more chemical to get through versus here. In a few years when stuff starts to re-sprout, you just clip it and then give it a little squirt and that's it. So you don't have any drift exposure or um, broadcasting. You're, it's uh, applied directly to the stick. Um, here, there's some little walnuts that had made it through and I keep all the walnuts I can and take out the trash. And that little area there, that honeysuckle still has a little bit of green on it. Not much, but I'll, you have two walnuts there and then a couple oaks and I'll go through and grab that honeysuckle and we're gonna let these walnuts do their thing. And hopefully with time, in our lifetime, hopefully they'll be big enough we can enjoy it. Hi everybody, this is Cassidy Robinson speaking. In previous videos, you had the privilege of seeing my face, but in this video instead, you get some beautiful drone footage of the work that Caleb Ebeling has been doing at the Reservoir Number 2 on the northeast part of the lake. You probably already watched a previous video of Caleb going over the methods that he used to do the practices that I'm gonna go over in this video. Um, but this is going to show you more of a bird's eye view of what it looks like now after he's done all of his good hard work out there. So as you can see, as the, as the drone is moving over the landscape here, there's a lot of open trees and the canopy is a lot more open. So a lot, of, a lot more sunlight is at the forest floor. And what Caleb did with his mulcher is grind down all of the invasive species. It was mostly honeysuckle and a mirror maple. Both of those are invasive species. And by mulching those, he is helping control those invasives so that now that sunlight that is reaching the ground is now able to hopefully go to more native species like our native hardwoods and herbaceous plants, our gooseberries and raspberries and blackberries, all those good native species. So that will not only improve our native species, but it'll also just overall increase the diversity. We're gonna be seeing a lot more different amounts and different species of plants than we would have uh, if Caleb had not treated the honeysuckle. 
because the honeysuckle was so severe, he will be coming back for two additional years to do some follow-up work because there's still a seed source in the soil from all of those invasive plants. So he'll be treating them for two more additional years to really give those natives a good chance at uh, taking over that area that the invasives um, have been at. And so um, it will also make it easier for you to walk through. As you can see, there's two people there, three people there, enjoying uh, the view and the nice trail. So it's gonna be more walkable for people to enjoy. And it will just overall increase the, the quality of habitat for wildlife. I mentioned diversity already. Having more diversity means not just in plants, but I'm talking insects and songbirds and our native mammals. Everything will be able to thrive more when we have more diverse species. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, even if you just park in the parking lot, you can see from a distance the difference of just one year of invasive control um, being done. And I'm excited to see what it'll look like the two years following um, after Caleb does more good work in the next couple of years. In this spot here, uh, this is where all the Amir maple was, so that's why it's really, really open. It was just a thicket of half-inch Amir maple stems, and we're hoping that some of those good hardwoods that you see that are left, like cherry and we have hackberry, and there's some scattered oak and some walnut in there too, we're hoping to get more of uh, species like that, but also not just thinking about trees, but the herbaceous layer too, where we have shrubby plants and more forbs and wildflowers too. So we'll just kind of get to watch the succession of plants uh, grow as the years go by. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this drone footage. The beautiful landscape Fairfield is full of native habitat for wildlife that people get to enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed this video today and I'm sure we'll be getting some updates uh, as time goes on. Thank you.